What's up, guys? It is time for the spotlight of the week. And today we got Daniel Casher. Daniel, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. What do you go Sorry. by on what do you go by on social media? Uh, Daniel Prime was the Prime. my social media ID for the longest time. Uh, I have since changed my Instagram and my TikTok account to Prime Directives Armory. Nice, uh, nice. Because I found uh, recently, I, I've been specializing more in um, armor and weapons, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, and then um, I don't know. I just it just felt like time to change to to more of a, a uh, rebrand. Uh, yeah, like like a rebrand, but instead of it being like exclusively me, because a couple of other people were coming into my shop and helping from time to time. Now yeah. they, they weren't coming in to actually partner or be a part of it. Like, Hey, you know, we want to, let's do this together. But it, it felt like one day that might be the possibility. So you want to leave so the door open a little bit. Yeah. I don't want it to be like a band, you know, like you, you know, you have those bands and it's just the front, the front guy's name and you know, the, the other guys don't get any recognition. Yeah, you don't want to be Jesse and the Rippers, right? You want to be right. the Rippers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Now, many of the fans may not know your face, but they know your work. Um, a lot of the fans that were at Power Morphicon 2018 uh, had the opportunity to take a picture in the uh, Megazord cockpit. That's something that you put together yourself. Uh, can you tell me about that whole process and like how, how it all came to be? Yes, I, I can. I mean, I, I don't know if you can tell, but some of the some of the remnants of that set are still here in my workshop. Nice, nice. So I see that. That's the backside. Yeah, the back the back parts of it. We um, so it's still around, sort, it, but not as it used to be. Uh, it can't be used like it was. It's not portable or anything. But that was a fun project. Uh, that was probably the biggest uh, project I had ever taken on, and not not so much like the scale of it, but also the amount of time we had to accomplish it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was pretty quick. We were, uh, we were approached uh, months before power morphing con like, Hey, can you build this or can this be built? And uh, the, the answer very quickly was like, absolutely. Yeah. That can be replicated. And then it just, it just started as a, uh, Hey, what, what do you want to accomplish? Do you want to do, is it just for photos? Do you want it to be interactive? So that's that's the beginning stage of most uh, when you're doing custom work for for a client. You have to find out what they're trying to accomplish. And with uh, with that project with you guys, it was um, is this interactive? Do you want to do just like a, a backdrop where all of that is printed, and then you just have the front, you know, control panel yeah. and the chairs? Like, how are we trying to get this thing to? Uh, you know, how much of this are we trying to recreate? And uh, I think we we dialed it in. Like we accomplished, I felt what, uh, it made the fans happy. I don't oh, yeah. remember seeing anybody that walked into that booth that wasn't, uh, wasn't shocked by it. I remember <laughs> two things that were like a highlight because uh, I babysat it for the whole weekend of our yeah. Morphin Con. Uh, one, was man i'm gonna i'm gonna make some some fans mad here because i can't remember his actual name but uh bulk the actor oh paul schreier thank you okay so he uh at the end of the event he was carrying he was at, he had his dolly his backpack he's going to catch his flight and he just happened to walk by the booth and again the event's over and he took and he just took a pause and he stopped and looked he goes man, that's better than anything we ever actually had on set. So that, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he was joking or what, but I mean, he did, you know, take a minute to just like take it in and be like, what, what is going on here? Cause his booth was all the way at the other end of the convention. So yeah. there's no way he didn't see it. Cause uh, we're, at, we're in the front row. We're in the, like the very, very front. Like as soon as the door opened and let people in, that's where you guys were. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, no, it was that. It's cool. There was that. And then the other kind of highlight was uh, Jason David Frank. Yeah. And he did one of his. Um, so he was just kind of looking at it because he was invited to come check it out. So he did. But, uh, you, you know, nobody knew how much time or he, and what he actually wanted to do. And then he was like, hey, can I go inside and do one of my um, my Morphin Life videos? And it's like, well, absolutely. Yes. So 
I got to, you know, I got to sit inside the Megazord with Jason David Frank and do, you know, it's morphing time. Yeah. Messed it all up. <laughs> but it, was, it was so funny. You know, my daughter, she's seven years old now, but at the time she's like, you know, knee yeah. high. She's, she's a little kid back then. She was tiny. But the thing is like, if you, everything from there down, she painted like all the gray. She yeah. was out here with me every day, you know, painting it, uh, putting the final touches on. So just to sum up with that project, uh, a lot of good memories, man, we had five days to build it. Yeah. We it was... built it in five days. <laughs> but the, the funny thing is I was approached about building it months and months ahead of time. And then I kept getting a phone call like, Hey, can you still build that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a month and then two weeks would go by. Hey, can you still, are you still down? I was like, absolutely. I'm just waiting on you. Uh, and then it was like two weeks. Yeah. Before I was like, man, I mean, I do, you were like, I don't, I, and at that point it was like, um, I almost wasn't going to be able to do it. And then, uh, we were, they were like, look, here's the deal. We didn't want to tell anybody that we could do, we didn't want to do it until like the last minute. We didn't want anybody to like steal the idea. And I was like, but now I don't know if we can do it, but I, I really know. want to. And then, um, our boy, he was like, you know, he's, he's a silver tongue devil dude he you know who i'm talking about yeah. man. he great guy and uh he he was just like look here so it didn't happen but this is what he, this, i'm just letting you guys know what really got me to drop everything and build this thing in five days because we're talking like 16 20 hour nights yeah 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 you know, i wouldn't go to sleep until 3 a.m sometimes and i had a crew like i actually had to bring in uh, and, people to, uh, to build it uh, 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 like two other people to help uh he's like look there's a good chance that Austin St. John and Jason David Frank are going to take this opportunity to bury the hatchet. You know, they want to do a photo op. And this is what I was told. Okay. Yeah. Now, whether or not any of this is true, I don't know. I don't really care, but that's what got me on. I was like, Oh wait, hold on. My, this my, like my childhood and these guys that I grew up like, cause I'm their age. I'm, I'm a very close age as these guys. So when I'm watching mighty more from power Rangers as a teenager, you know, I'm seeing my, I'm seeing Jason and I'm seeing Tommy, like characteristics of these guys in my life. Like, you know, they, they molded my, you know, I didn't have a father growing up. So yeah. characters in movies were where I went to, like, what does it mean to be a hero? What does it mean to be a man? Um, I'm sure a lot of the viewers can, can relate to that. Yeah, definitely. So just like being a part of like potentially being a part of that moment would have been really awesome. I know, I know things that, uh, around that time they had like made it so they were in separate rooms or something i don't know it's it, something went down and uh it's even crazier now with all the news that's coming out right now but uh um, right yeah but i mean dude it like everybody that saw it they're like oh my god I, I, a few cosplayers came in and took pictures with it and uh it actually like you know once you take once you take that one photo it looks exactly the same I, I think i've seen a few people even do the freaking green ranger punching the yellow ranger across the freaking board uh the megazord you know just recreating some iconic scenes in the cockpit so that was really cool so they you, had fun. yeah they, they did have fun. have fun now so you 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 said you you followed the power rangers uh since the start um did you ever like uh go away from it and come back or where have you been watching it ever since I went away uh, yeah. because, you know, I joined the military right out of high school and, you know, Mighty Morphin was ending. Uh, so I, I honestly, I had no idea after the movie, you know, you know, I, of course, when I'm, you know, I'm overseas or whatever, we see what movies are coming out. And so I, I knew about the movie and then yeah. I knew about Turbo. Yeah. But I never got to see it in theaters. I was just like, oh, wow, they made a Turbo movie. I wonder what that's about. But I never watched it. Yeah. And then it was about six, seven years. Oh, wait. Well, Power Morphicon. <laughs> so I get, uh, you know, this quickening, you know, that, that Highlander term where I'm, you know, I'm reinvigorated with this, the lore. Because, I mean, I was like a little kid again. Yeah. I thought Power Rangers was done uh, back in 98 or whatever. And then I'm getting approached with this, I, this thing. And so I go and do my research. I'm like, well, let me look at some screenshots. And then I find out like wait a minute you know their power rangers isn't over it's still going on and then i meet uh one of my really good friends now we we're, we're basically like brothers uh danny from we the geeks of east la so mm -hmm. he 
he very quickly re-educates me on like, okay, look, you, you, here's, here's what you can do to catch up. And then, um, so that helped a lot, uh, just getting back into the franchise after a lifetime being away, you know, there's so much content mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to all of them. <laughs> me and some guys, like we have, like, I have issues with SPD, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, we go back and forth. So I, I'm not one of those fans who's like, everything's great. Yeah. yeah, but 100%. I, I, Overall. I mean, I, I love that. I watch, I watch it with my daughter, uh, she, here, let me show you this. This is hers. So th this is actually my daughter. She's seven years old Yeah. and this, this belongs to her and she's going through and she's getting, you know, the different red Rangers. To That's sign awesome, man. Uh, so I'm getting to not just come back into it uh for myself but you know my daughter i get to see her grow up with it and right now if you ask her like hey what do you want to do when she grows up uh she's like well let me tell you my plan i need to learn gymnastics and you're like oh, oh cool that's great you know what do you want to do gymnastics for because i want to be a power ranger oh <laughs> i mean she's got plans on on top of plans it's great that's awesome man now i mean just being kind of like in the fandom you've actually have been a part of a lot of these like uh either fan films or or you know tribute films that even have a lot of power ranger uh power ranger actors involved in them can you tell me how you got involved with some of these projects oh goodness um man i, I wish it was a simple answer but i feel like it was uh Man, it's like Zordon said, I need a nerd who can build stuff for real cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's kind of what happened. This energy just came out. You know, well, I keep telling people this. The nerd culture, it's a very small group. It's not as big as people think it is. Like the the uh, geekdom, fandom, I mean, there there's not that many really in this area. There were yeah. like Bourbon, California. It's yeah. a small, it's a small grid. And uh, among those, the prop builders, like people that actually like make, uh, you know, uh, your cosplay props, that's an even smaller group within mm -hmm. that group. So, uh, you know, there was a, I, I, I believe there was a couple of us that were approached maybe with the idea, uh, but, you know, because I'm local and, uh, you know, a couple of people knew me, that was just like, that was it. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, uh, we order on Amazon because it's so convenient. So like once you found someone that can kind of do your, or at least they say that they can do it and you, you have that sit down meeting and it goes okay. So, you know, we had to sit down, we had to sit down me and Joe, uh, about going back to the, the, the Megazord. So I think it all started then. The reason I'm in these fandom films, these, these live, these live action fan-made Power Ranger films is because of this Megazord set. Yeah. So it all started way back then. I, I had a comic book store that I, I, I owned and operated for about a year to two years. And, uh, you know, Joe comes over. We talk about some T-shirts. One day we're talking about T-shirts. And the next thing we're talking about Megazords. And then we're talking about building stuff. And then Power Morphin Con happens. Uh, a few people like, you know, oh, wow, you can build this. You can build that. Then fast forward to this past two years, uh, right before the pandemic, uh, Irving Lambert. So Irving, he and, and Nerdbot, uh, they, they end up work kind of, uh, networking together to film using the Megazord. And, uh, so Irving, part of his camp is like King Vader and Nerdbot wanted to work with King Vader, but they'd never met him. Mm -hmm. And uh, our boy DJ Rivers, mm -hmm. he just happens to know a guy oh. who's who's got like they're all connected. So you know this guy knows that guy. You know the seven degrees of separation, right? Yep. So some people reach out to their people who ended up reaching out to their people, and then they're, we're filming. We're filming here in my garage in my shop, and then um, and then everyone's like nerding out about. Like, oh my gosh, we're in the Megazord. It's like, you built this. Well, how about, can you make this? And then so one, one big project led to 
the weird thing is this big project led to small projects like, hey, can you make me a sword? Can you make me a, a, a blaster? And then the next thing was, hey, you know what? Um, do you want to come check out the set? Do you want to come and see what we're filming? And I was like, yeah, sign me up. Absolutely. I love this stuff. Mm -hmm. So then that led to I was on set one day and then uh, I remember, you know, just trying to be helpful. Like, I don't want to just stand there and watch. You know, if I see someone, they need tape. If yeah. I see that, you know, the actor, well, it started out with props. So if I see the actor struggling with his helmet or his costume, like I'm right there, Johnny, on the spot, like helping out. Yeah. So I felt like what happened is some of these guys that are running their productions, you know, we're all doing this for passion and they see someone who's, you know, trying to be helpful also, they remember that. And so now we're talking to this current project I'm working on with NerdBot slash DJ and uh, Chris came and Lee, which is um, called, um, Bloodline, what was it called? Of the Grid. Bloodline of the Grid. Yeah. So that's the current project that I'm working on with, with, uh, so it's NerdBot is the umbrella. So everything umbrella is under NerdBot, which is co produced with DJ and Chris mm -hmm. came and Lee. And uh, so I'm out there, get invited to, to the set, like, hey, can you come help out? And then it, it goes from like one just being invited to, Oh, hey, by the way, at uh, the next one or from here on out, uh, I'd like to see it. Can you just be a production assistant? Can you just can you handle that? Can you do can you do that? We'd love it if you could do that. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, you know what? I just want to be helpful. Uh, I, I if you think I if you think I can handle it, I'm, I'm there. I, I just want to help out. So, yeah, sign me up. And then. Um, then we work on that and then nerdbot has like another group that they that does power and so you've got dj and chris working on bloodline of the grid mm -hmm. and then you also have colin mm -hmm. who's working on his rise of the ninja and shattered past mm -hmm. uh, i'm probably going to get a couple of the names wrong but you know I'm, I'm not actually in their productions of that but is that what the shirt is right there this one is, yeah, I believe this one is from Collins, uh, from Collins universe. Mm -hmm. He calls it the extended universe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Rangers extended universe. So because of the help that I've done with them, with other stuff, uh, he's like, Hey man, I got you a shirt here. You can, this is for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was like, dude, thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, and then, but I, I see like down the road, there's a possibility that I'm going to be working on like multiple power, even though they're, it seems like it's the same group, like nerd, you know, nerdbot is at the top and they're helping out with like DJ and Chris's stuff, but mm -hmm. they're two separate, uh, films. Gets, gets really confusing. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Especially, <laughs> especially with Collins because Colin plays multiple characters in it. So it's like, wait, yeah. who, who is he? Now you've got <laughs> DJ that's in both his character, his same character is in oh. both. Yeah. <laughs> Crossing. But, you know, it's it's one of those things where I feel like there's so much there's there's enough uh, there's a there's enough content or I'm sorry around. there's enough fans I'm sorry there's enough fans out there that why limit the amount or type of your or your type hundred percent hundred percent yeah because you know what it's like uh, let's take Batman for example like yeah. I, I grew up on Keaton. yeah but I, I like the recent installment and I, yeah. I love Ben Affleck's take I love Ben I, Affleck yeah. I don't necessarily like the story of uh, the Justice League movie. I think they really messed up Bat Batman's character. Yeah. He's not a comedian. And like every so often you hear Ben Affleck saying lines that are like comical. Yeah. But as far as his portrayal of Batman, man, yeah. I think he nailed it. I think he, he was like, he was like, um, what you call it? You know, the animated Batman, but like in live action. You know, oh, watch uh, the, the video Arkham. Play the yeah. video game Arkham, and you're playing Ben Affleck. Yeah. Like that's, dude. He nailed. He nailed. But um, what I mean is, uh, so getting into like these arguments. Okay, let's talk about Spider Man, for example. You know, yeah. which which Spider Man is your favorite? And I love what they did with the last one because what they did for fans is like, look, these guys mm -hmm. actually love and appreciate each other. Yeah, they're yeah. trying to show us that. It, why are we arguing over? which version is better it's like just you know be calling make as much content if it if throw yep. it on the wall like spaghetti and see if it sticks somebody yep. out there someone out there is gonna love it but you also have people like my friend or my, my brother my little brother 
Danny from We the Geeks of East LA, his content is more like of a purist style. It, it yeah. has to make sense. We have to, you know, start with an idea. And if it fits in the box and doesn't stray too much out of, of the verse, yeah. then, you know, that's where he's trying to stay. He yeah. wants to stay where his story, like if you watch his, his content, his episode one of whatever he made, it connects to what he does now. He it, yeah. it, it's always connecting, and his characters are. It's a it's a it's a, a linear timeline, a lim, a linear storytelling. It, it's linear, and he tries to make it like if the character could do, could do this in the actual series, then it, it makes sense. Yeah. If yeah. not, we don't we don't like for example. And this is not against people who just film what they can. Take for example Saba. Nobody should be able to use Saba except for a certain ranger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. But you've got people like me who just make something cool and they're like, man, I want to, I want to use this, but I don't have the white ranger suit. I just happen to have Saba yeah. and I have this. So yeah. for the sake of the content and, and you're just going to make a video because it's, it's fun for you. You yeah. don't care about the rules. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I do that kind of stuff all the time. I mean, I I'll, I'll make a certain prop or a weapon here in my shop and I'll just want to, want to use it mm -hmm. and be like dang i i hope they don't crucify me for accidentally like <laughs> you just gotta do you, you gotta do what you love and, and going right. to that like you are a craftsman like you're the definition of a craftsman you've you've created and brought to life some of these things that we've only seen on tv and we've only seen in comics can you tell me about like diving into you know the fandom and like creating these like epic props from from the franchise Oh, okay. One of my favorites that I got to be a part of making. So I um, was the uh, Psycho Red Saber, the Psycho Saber. Yeah. I don't think everyone, I, I, like, I don't think it's been in the show long enough for anybody to, like, look at it so long, you know? Right. You know, well, a lot, <laughs> that's funny that you say that. Okay. So I met, oh my gosh, I'm going to get his name wrong. Psycho um, Red? No, Patrick. I know Patrick. Uh, I mean, as far as like crafters go, but uh, to I want to I want to put a pin in uh, the first thing and 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 dial in on what you just said. The, I think the reason why we don't see things close up is I got a chance to see some of the actual props that were on the set yeah. of the M Mighty Morphin and other sets, and I met the the master. The, I don't. Why did I use quotes? <laughs> I met the master prop builder from the set, and he he. Uh, he showed me the props and I was like, wow, these are, these are amazing because of their heritage and their, their iconic status in the, in the world of the, uh, the Rangers. But these props are horrible. Like yeah. they're, they're so trash. Um, and then you hear Jason David Frank, like he'll talk about it all the time. He's like, yeah, this was just Velcroed and it was falling apart all the time. And I think that's why we don't get like a lot of super close ups is be, and, and where, and where that, hurts the prop builder is we're trying to recreate these things all as accurate as we can you know we're we're screenshotting everything and when you can't get these close-ups you're just kind of like well i'm just gonna have to you know make my own interpretation of it mm -hmm. like right now i'm working on these little uh where's my camera there you go right there so i'm working on these little um uh spiral sabers saber, you know keychains and and earrings and uh necklaces and uh, and uh, you know, a, a, until I got some really good screen accurate photos, I was just having to kind of like make it up. And then, uh, same thing with one of my favorite projects right now is the, uh, galaxy saber, the quasar sabers. Yeah. Did I say galaxy? <laughs> the quasar no, that, saber. I saw, I saw that picture and I was like, wow, these look beautiful. So I'm going into like a 3d modeling program and I'm trying to, uh, there are people who've already made some 3d models of it. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that there's as, there's as bad, but, um, like I got a chance to see one of the more, most accurate ones I'm holding it and I'm looking at it and going, man, this is great. This is, this is a beautiful sword, but then I'm watching lost galaxy again. And then a, another buddy of mine just happens to have the actual Sentai books yeah. and, uh, he lend them to me and he's one of these guys like, you know, you know, wear gloves, please protect it. And I was just, I was so humbled that he even let me look at, at, at these magazines and these books because, you know, they're the only ones and it, like you, how many people have the actual printed one from like back in the 60s, 70s of the Sentai series yeah. here in America, here in America. 
So he's letting me look at it. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I noticed something. So on the Quasar, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, the Quasar Saber, the handle, uh, there's a red jewel that is like right on the hilt, like right before the, and they put it on, most, uh, most modelers have put that jewel on both sides of the hilt. Yeah. But then I was watching, I was looking at the pictures and then I'm watching Lost Galaxy again. And that jewel is only on one side. It's, mm. it's like a, and I think that what their idea is, it is like, it's a button, like it activates the saber. I don't yeah, know. Because it collapses, the saber collapses. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense that the jewel's only on one. And you see it on Leo, like Leo, you see that he's holding it with his thumb on the jewel. Yeah. But it's not on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now, uh, the original question was, uh, remind me, the original question was, uh, do I want, Patrick, okay. So some of these like iconic things that I've been able to work on, uh, most recently was the, uh, the Psycho uh, Saber. Thank you. So the most recent one, the Psycho Saber is something I got to work on. I got to be a part of uh, bringing that thing to life. And again, people have made this before, but um, I was able to actually give it to Patrick mm -hmm. on set. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many creators get to do that? How many yeah. get to like get, to make something that is actually going to the person who brought this character to life? And yeah. now Patrick himself is getting to reprise his role. And now he's getting to like actually be the full on character, not just doing the voice in a booth or something. Yeah. He, he's actually getting to play his, the character that he created or the version of the character he created for America. Yeah. And the great thing about that is, okay. So as a prop builder, a lot of times uh, we like to, we like to see, or at least get some kind of reaction from, from the person that this is going to. And uh, when Patrick picked up the sword for the first time, we're out, we're out shooting on location. We're outside. It's like a hundred degrees outside and we got a canopy and he's underneath the canopy and he grabs the sword and he's like, man, I, I never actually got to wield this thing. Mm -hmm. how, how does this, how, how would you use this one? And he's like a little kid and he whacks, he does like this, you know, over his head. And the tip of it like hits the metal part of the no. game, cracks the. <laughs> no. Uh. But, you know, everybody there was just so, just in, in such good spirits. You know, we're like, oh no, that sucks. But hey, man, it's not a big deal. It can be fixed. I mean, we're talking like the top, the very, very top, you know, five centimeters of it. It, it wasn't a big deal. It was, I just had, it. I actually brought like a repair kit out to the set and we just, we just yeah. fixed it on the spot. But to see him like, Dude, we're all grown men, you know, and to see him just like act like a little child, like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I remember um, my first Power Morph Con is 2014, me and my buddy uh, were Zordon and Alpha, and he had made like the nice. command center, and his head was Zordon's head. And we we're walking by and we saw Zordon and Zordon said, can I put it on? And he put it on and then like, it's just like you, like you're saying, it, it's, it's a, it's like a feeling... David David, the actor, actually yeah. wanted to wear that. That's awesome. He put it on, yeah. Um, and to this day, he remembers that every time I see him at a convention, he said, "Oh yeah, how's your buddy? How's Zord uh, your cosplayer Zordon?" It's like, "Oh, he's good." So yeah, that feeling, that feeling of like you making something and then the original, you know, the source material, uh, you know, appreciating it's uh, always fun. Um, so it's great, you know, it's a great. Um, I know you're also working on a project with uh, Danny. Uh, in the uh lost galaxy suits are also the um you know the starship trooper suits uh any any uh news on you know when that's coming out so danny's episode he's filming the last two scenes uh I hope he says i think he he's hoping this week mm -hmm. or by next week he'll be done uh with the shoots for that and then Danny edits pretty quickly. I mean, he does most everything himself. He writes yeah. it, directs it. He does all the special the VFX. Yeah. Uh, he will even get his hands dirty making some props if he has to. Yeah. Uh, You've been teaching him how yeah. to make some props as well. Well, he uh, he was already pretty handy himself. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll come to the shop from time to time and spend a week here, like every day, just helping me sand and paint. And, I mean, the, the guy is very very talented. I mean, there are times when I, and I'm still learning. I mean, yeah, yeah. 
Dude, I mean, I was working on uh, like I one. I learn a lot from you, especially in we, with the 3D stuff. I'm still, you know, you know, just trying to figure out things, and you're teaching me some new processes. Um, you taught me about. Hold on. Oh, let me let me go grab it. Hold on. So you're teaching because, uh, as you know, there is a especially for some Chrome stuff. There's an, a, a very expensive paint that's out there, a Luma Luster or whatever. Luma Luster. Yeah, yeah, and I, I am not going to pull the trigger on, on buying it. But you show me a cool trick that I learned from your TikTok is the uh, the gunmetal uh, trick where you can uh, print. Um, so I printed Mjolnir. Um, I, made, I, put, I put some little cracks in it. I want to put like uh, little lightning cracks in it to kind of uh -huh. resemble Natalie Portman's, but it's a, it used to be just a flat silver, but I tried your little, uh, gunmetal, uh, graphite oh. and black. Yeah. And it just looks, I love it. Like it, it, it looks right. great. It looks so now, realistic. Did you, did you clear coat after the fact or just leave it the way it is? I clear coated. Cause, um, if I didn't there, you know, there'd be some residue on, I was just curious, like how, how much of a down downgrade, Oh yeah, yeah. see the clear coat that I had. If I, I think if I had like a uh, glossy one, I think it would made it look cooler. But like when I first put it on without the clear coat, it looked amazing. Like it looked so good. Um, but, so there, there, I mean, there is a slight, you know, step down in the quality. It just looks but, flatter. Yeah. But when you get that effect, you know, you just take a little bit of graphite powder, and you know, just buff it in, and yeah. man, it's crazy how much of a difference that little technique it, yeah. it changes. It changes your prop from looking like a toy yeah. to uh, the real thing. I mean, it's, it's so much fun. I mean, I, I was fortunate to meet Ray Bradbury like the year before he passed away. And if you don't know who Ray Bradbury is, Shame uh, on he's, you. Bas <laughs> he, <laughs> he's basically the pioneer of science fiction uh, yeah. uh, writing. He, uh, dude, the guy, he was so sharp. We're, we're in this library and the library's full of us and we're, we're listening to him. He's recounting like all of the things that happened in his life that led to his career. Like he basically is explaining his career and, and man, I mean, he was like almost 80 years old and the guy, his memory was so sharp. Yeah. Um, uh, then it comes time to get an autograph. Like everyone there, we, we line up and, one of my buddies who I didn't plan, I didn't know he was going to be there. He he's in line right behind me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we found each other in the crowd, but you know, now we're in line and we're waiting. So I happened to be the last person that was able to get an autograph. Cause at some point he got tired and his handler, he looked at his handler. He's like, look, man, I got it. We got to cut it off. Yeah. And here's what's sad. Uh, here, or it, it worked out, but it, I, I almost freaked out because my buddy was behind me. Mm -hmm. He's like, he saw the line and he didn't want to wait. He goes, Hey man, can you get this sign for me? Give me this book. I was like, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I wasn't thinking, you know, and I'll never do this ever again <laughs> because of this experience. So he's like, can you get this? And he leaves. So I'm standing in line for ever. And then, you know, I have my, my friend of mine and I get up and I, I just out of instinct handed him the book first uh, oh, to no. get signed. and he signed it. And then he tells his hand, he's like, that's it. I, I got to call it and not, I can't, I can't go on anymore. Oh, no. And I'm, and I'm holding a binder and I wrote this like little short science fiction, science fiction story. And it's in one of my little journals. And I was like, and I, and I'm like, this look on my face is like, oh no, yeah. no. And he sees me and he goes, what's wrong? I was like that book. And I tell him the story. That's not for me. Uh -huh. This is actually what I want you to sign for me. I, I did that as a favor. And he yeah. very quickly is like, you know what? Just hand me the book. Mm -hmm. He looks at it, gives it a quick glance. And then he puts, you know, A++. Mm -hmm. It gives me a grade. And then he says, love what you do and do what you love. And you will never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, I know he didn't coin that phrase, but it's it, it, it's one of those things where any chance I get to, to have an audience and we're talking about, you know, they want to know what makes me you know, tick or what makes me want to do what I do. And it, it goes back to that experience. Like, you know, up until then I was just doing jobs. I was working at Radio Shack or something, mm -hmm. or, or, or I was working sales, like uh, different sales jobs. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment where I'm like, you know what, what am I doing? Like, why am I just working? And Jim Carrey even attests to it. He's like, you can pick a safe job. 
Mm -hmm. but it doesn't guarantee you're going to be successful. It doesn't mean that you won't have a chance of, you know, that, that not working out. Yeah. So I don't know Jim Carrey personally. (laughs) I don't subscribe to everything Jim Carrey, but I, I, I can say that, uh, you know, going back to the Megazord, the, when we built the Megazord, it was like, hey, dude, can you still make it? And I'm like, I only five, five days. Like, I can build stuff, but dang, that is a huge undertaking. Part of me was like, look, dude, I'm, I don't think I can, I don't think I can do that. I mean, you give me three months, I'm going to make mistakes and I can probably fix it along the way. But this was like, we had to do it. It had to be a one time go, like, no mistakes. You do three, 3D printing now, right? Mm hmm. How many times do you set that printer to go and you're just like, please, when I come back tomorrow, you're going to work. It's the, it's the worst feeling in the morning. Um, you know, after leaving it on for the night, it's like, please may have the support, you know, held it. Please will it stick to the bed. Please man failed. Nothing yeah. failed. No layer shifting like that. Yeah. It, it it's, it's that type of feeling. It, it's the worst. Uh, but when you get to have experiences like, you see the fans, every single person that got inside the Megazord was just, you know, oh my, they were just amazed. Uh, Honestly, even, I think even like the, the holders of the con were like, this is, this is probably one of the coolest things that we have here. And, and it, they had Bandai over there, like have their own booth. And this was, that, that was, that was <laughs> the know, draw. I remember Hasbro, Hasbro had like the Beast Morpher suits on display. Yeah. And then they even had actors come through yeah. at one point wearing them. And, you know, people were just lined up to, to, to just be inside this this yeah. thing. And then, you know, you got that. And then you get to meet, you know, Patrick, who, you know, is just so excited to see something he's a part of getting recreated. Chris, uh, you know, he's getting... He's getting to put, he's literally putting his blood, sweat, and tears into this project. There was a day we're on the set. It's a hundred degrees outside. He's got a mohawk. Mm-hmm. There's no shade. He, you know, he's getting just burned, you know, to a crisp. And on top of that, what, you know how you got to use spirit glue to put like. Prosthetics yeah. On yeah. And that's not comfortable at all. It's not comfortable already. And, uh, and that's the way you do it with the spirit glue. Well, we were out he, we were out of spirit glue one day. Um, oh, whoever no. was in charge that day to bring everything, it just it, something something happened where it, it, we didn't have spirit glue. Dude, Chris takes super glue and and no. super glue. Is, yeah. Oh my god, that's crazy. And you know how bad and toxic like super glue is yeah. when you bring it in. Yeah. Dude's got super. He's putting super glue on his eyeball and then attaching that prosthetic that he's made, and he's just. Ah! that's crazy dude and, i mean just a trooper man just that and, 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 and they're doing and they're doing this because they love the fandom and yeah. they they love what they they were a part of and they kind of want to enhance it i think that's awesome and i think he's that getting, huh yeah he's not getting a paycheck for this this yeah. is this is strictly for him and the, and the fans yeah to see where he thinks his character exists and you, today. you get to help facilitate these 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 new like visions of some of like their storylines and i think that that's something to be proud of and proud of and i think that that's really cool and like that's why i always go to you for advice on <laughs> on different things or like hey if i need something done like i ask if you have the time i know you're a busy guy but i know like i trust your craft and i trust uh the, you know that your workmanship so i know that it you know it's going to come out great so I always appreciate that. I appreciate the uh, the um, the faith that people like you and whoever calls me for advice, because I'll tell you the truth, man. Most of what I know is because of like so much failure. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not one of those kind of guys that is like, I'm not afraid to fail. So when I when I make stuff, there's probably, you know, 10 times that I get it wrong and mm-hmm. then I start to get it right. And sometimes I got it right just before a phone call like like yours yeah. or a text hey you know i'm doing it like oh my gosh you don't even know like <laughs> here don't and i'm the kind of person i i don't like to gatekeep that's why i love the three the 3d printing community is probably one of the rarest you know as far as profit yeah. goes because yeah. i haven't met too many there's always one or two but we're not talking about them for the most yeah. part 3d the 3d printers engineering community they they are just the the first 
to give you as much information as they can about your troubleshooting technique. Because right? oh, they, yeah, because yeah, like you, they've been through the, they they've been through all the issues and had the problems, and they don't you know they don't want other people to you know experience it too. So they're going to give you as much knowledge as as they can. So I think that's that's great. It, it's an awesome group, uh, you know, to be a part of. If any of you guys that are you know watching this and you're you haven't got into prop building. I highly recommend, you know, starting off with a, a decent 3D printer and, and just make some cool stuff. Power coins, make, yeah. make some, make, make some Power Ranger coins. Or- I make some, like I make some crazy stuff now. Like <laughs> just like when I have extra filament or extra freaking resin, I'll make some little rock, rock to puss things and just you know, bring, yeah. leave them on my desk at work. And people are like, what the hell is this? It's like, oh, it's just, you know, just fun. You know, you just go on the website, find some crazy files. And it's just fun putting them together. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for for you know taking the time to uh, talk. Is there any uh, any where can we find you? Any plugs that you want to plug in before we go? Uh, I guess if they want to uh, find me, it's a uh, Prime Directives Armory mm-hmm. on Instagram and TikTok. Those are yeah. my main two platforms. Yeah, TikTok. You guys got to follow him on TikTok because he's got a lot of cool tips and fun thank projects you. that he's working on. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, just. You know, get out there and make stuff, guys. Yeah, get out yeah. there and, and make a mess. Yeah. Make an absolute mess of your workshop, and then Power Ranger fans, he's building, he's building Power Ranger props out of the Megazord right now. It's, it's freaking yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, it, that kind of gets lost on me sometimes that I'm building Power Ranger props in a Megazord. You know, it's like, you know, do do stuff. Like if you need a pencil holder, you know, make yeah. yourself a new pencil holder. You know, that's pretty cool. That, that, man. This is this is my thumb drive. Uh, yeah. I hold all, you know, when you're getting into 3D printers, you need like your thumb drives. All hold all the button. files. I have, I have a, yeah. this thing that right here. Not, this yeah. is, this has all the files right here. <laughs> yeah. Get out there, have some fun and then, um, make mistakes. Most importantly, I say, don't expect success. Like right away. I, I'm, I'm, I'm working with this one guy trying to help him build his brand and, He's like, okay, how do how do I make money? How do I start selling? Now I got my 3D printer. I made my he made his he literally has just made his first successful print, mm-hmm. and he's already like, yeah. How do I-, I, I? That's the thing. Like I don't because there's so many things you got to think about when you're like if if you're not the creator of the file, like making sure that um, all credit is due and stuff like that. It, it it's 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 tough, you know. Um, but it's fun, honestly. Well, it's it's- fun that's part of it but it's also like it takes a while to build your brand i mean you, you know you know more than most like yeah it you, takes a while patience you'll get on the you'll get on the the verge of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel success and then all of a sudden there's the rebranding yeah, yeah. so you haven't even you know now we're talking about people who haven't even created their brand but you know what god bless their excitement like oh yeah. my gosh like i can do this and they see you know the vision uh for me yeah, I said, you know, when I first met um, Joe, I had a store like we had a brick and mortar mm-hmm. and that's where I thought I was going to be 10, 20 years into the future was just running a, a fun geek hangout place. Yeah. But that wasn't in the cards. But, you know, it's got to roll a lot of time it. later and I, I'm actually doing what it just did. I, I will spend hours in my shop either answering questions you can attest or just making making a mess of something. Yeah. And, and, it's a- and you're having, you're having fun from what I can tell. So oh, it's, it's so much fun. I, I'm, I'm very blessed. You know, I can't, I cannot complain right now. And I bet your kid, I mean, your, your kid probably looks at you like, man, dad's creating the coolest things. Anything that I can think of anything that I ever want, he he'll make. And I think that's, that's beautiful, man. That's freaking it beautiful. Is beautiful. I, I, I'm glad that you, that you saw that you, uh, you see that, you know, that this is, um, you know, we're, the next generation of Power Ranger fans, you know, we're raising them. We are yeah. raising the next, the next group. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, she looks at me and goes, she thinks I can build anything. Yeah. She like the other day, she, we're watching, we're currently watching uh, Time Force. Uh-huh. And, and uh, she's like, dad, oh my gosh, dad, I need you to make me her costume. But the, the villain, I forget the character's name. Yeah, the, I can't daughter. remember. Yeah, I can't the daughter's, remember. The daughter's, but that daughter. looked really cool. That would look She really loves cool. that characters because yeah. she's got that that pink really hair pink hair yeah and it just stands out to my daughter she and she the armor she goes yeah. she looks you know awesome. what? her classmates don't stand a chance on halloween they do not stand a chance no they don't we uh <laughs> we, 
Yeah, uh, man, we have so much fun. I mean, going back to what you said, and I'll, I'll, I know you want to wrap up. Yeah, it's, it's a, it started as a passion. It many nights of heartache, of you know, burned fingertips, hot glue, <laughs> super, just a whole lot of mess. And then now we're we're at a point where, um, you know, we're just having so much fun right now. I can't, That's awesome, man. I can't wait for you guys to see Danny's next project. Chris is Chris and DJ's next project, uh, Colin's next project. I mean, these guys that I'm fortunate to be, you know, grouped in with right now, man, they're, they're oh, Irving. I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> Irving was one of my first believers in, in, in my process. Uh, dude, he, if you don't know Irving Lambert, the other guys you probably know because of power Rangers, Irving did a power Rangers thing a while back, but you know, go check out their stuff. Uh, it's, 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 it's so awesome. Guys, uh, you know, thank you so much for even wanting to have, have any kind of insight with me. Uh, I'll say this last thing uh, with, with what's happening in the Power Ranger community. I feel like it's something I want to say. It's like, you know, once a ranger, always always a ranger. It, it, it really resonates with me right now more than anything. You know, I think we really need to remember why we're fans yeah. of the fandom. You know, we watch these shows. And, you know, you have these character arcs, you know, let's say, for example, a villain, Andros's sister. I'm sorry, I forget her name right now. You know, even astronomer. So, uh, yeah, astronomer, you know, uh, Rita and, and Lord Zed at the end, you know, they get blasted with a wave of goodness by Zordon. And, and you know, now we just kind of forgive everything that, you know, they did these heinous things. <laughs> now we have like in our own community, you know, we don't. You know, we need to have that same love. Yeah. I mean, we have to have, have that same energy in real life. Yeah. That's great, man. That 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 especially today that it me it, it makes a lot of sense, and I think that uh, especially with the fandom, especially with a small fandom as Power Rangers is compared to other ones like Star Wars and stuff like that, we all got to stick oh, yeah. together. We got to. Yeah, the together. Star Wars fans are great, but you know, like I said, going back to something we talked, we hinted on earlier. Yeah. Our fandom is very it's a very small community and In comparison yeah you know we gotta may the power protect us man <laughs> you know and that is us the power is in us yeah we gotta protect each other yeah so that's great well, thank you guys so much for watching. Daniel, you got to check out Daniel. His links will be in this description. You can check out his work on TikTok, on Instagram, and through a lot of the projects that he's been working on. Um, he's a great prop maker. And honestly, like he's in, he, he, he builds, he builds amazing. You're like, uh, you're like uh, the dad from, uh, from, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, where you just make the whole worlds and stuff, you know? <laughs> Ego ego you know I'll, so that's I'll pretty cool <laughs> i'll take it I thank you guys so much for watching uh be sure to uh like stuff. and subscribe <laughs>